Okay. Uh, so let's see. An electron travels in a wave-like manner. Not necessarily two-dimensional, but in that sine-cosine sort of manner. Okay, instead of calling this function, we want to name this function, instead of calling it f of x like you do in math, we call it psi of x. That's it. It's called the wave function. Okay, it's just a function, it's just an equation. So, uh, in your book, it divided out two ways to think about this. What was theoretically, hypothetically, the easy way was the two-dimensional part, which was called particle in a box. This is hypothetically the easy way, in that you can visualize this a little bit easier. This is two-dimensional, but this is not uh, scientifically accurate. It's just the easy way to warm up. And then we'll move to the three-dimensional side. Okay, so let's start off now with the two-dimensional side. How this works is we have our kind of x-y axis. Here's our x-axis. Our y-axis we'll just label with psi of x. Oops, psi of x. x goes from the origin, 0, to the point L. Okay, so we're considering a standing wave. It means the wave doesn't move. There's two ends that it's stuck onto. And then to make it look like a box, and this is just to prettify it, to beautify it, is we put that line right there. That's the only reason that line's right there. Okay. And then you'll see, I'll, I'll just draw a random wave function here. Like that. You have a wave function in your box. Okay. Now, uh, the couple key parts here. One key part is to identify the number of internal nodes. How many nodes does this have? Two. Two. One. Two, those are nodes. This has uh, two nodes that are internal. Okay? That means n, your principal quantum number, also known as your orbit number and all that stuff, is going to equal 3. Because n equals nodes. Uh, no, no, no. Nodes equal n minus 1. That's always true, even for 3D. That equation is going to hold. You'll need to know that equation. Okay, so there's two nodes. That means n equals 3. So this is the, you know, the third level. The lowest energy level is n equals 1, and this is the higher energy level here. The n equals 3. The second thing that you'd be interested in knowing is what's the, how are wavelength and L related? Okay? Well, in this case, L equals a wavelength and a half. This has one wavelength and a half. So, it's 3 halves lambda, or the general equation is L equals N over 2 lambda. Whether your instructor gives you that or not, I have no idea. Okay, the other thing, this will probably be given, the wave function for any N of X is 2 over L sine N pi X over L. So you can see it looks like a sine wave, the square root of 2 over L, that's the... Uh, amplitude, and then you have that argument in the sine function. So in our case, because n equals 3, you just say, well, that wave function that I drew, psi of 3 of x, is the square root of 2 over L, sine, and if you can identify where the letter n is, you're set. Instead of n, you put 3. 3 pi x over L. And what, I don't even have to graph it, I just know because that's the equation I put in n, this describes this wave function I just drew. Okay, and that's no n from n. So if you know n, you can find L in terms of lambda, and you can find the wave function. And you can find the nodes. So n is the key part of all this. Yeah? Okay, the question is, what about the start and end point at 0 and L? Yeah, those, she asked, why don't those count as nodes? They are nodes, and they're called external nodes. So we have both internal and external nodes. The reason I don't pay attention too much is that when you get to 3D, they totally ignore all external nodes, as if they don't exist. So here, I'm just kind of doing the same thing. But if your instructor asked you, what about all nodes, including internal and external, you'd have to add to whatever your internal node answer is. 
So yeah, they're, they are considered those. They're just less meaningful for us. Rock and roll. Okay, and then... Okay, is that okay? Okay, and then with 2D, there's one more part. We want to know where the electron is. And psi squared, if you square the function, the actual function, this means the probability of finding, or represents the probability of finding an electron, or what's called the probability density. Again, I don't know if your instructor taught this or taught it a different way, but here's the basic deal of how this works. So psi squared, which in the previous example would just be psi 3 squared, which is 2 over L, I'm just squaring it. I'm not simplifying or doing anything to it. 3 pi x over L. That represents, that function right there represents the probability of finding an electron. If you want to graph it without using your graphing calculator, all you have to do is redraw in the nodes. Remember there were two nodes in the example we did, just did for n equals 3. There's two nodes. And if you look at this, anything that's positive and you square it stays positive. Anything that's 0 when you square it stays 0. Anything that's negative when you square it becomes a positive. So I'm going to redraw the size squared now, and it'll look like this. Uh, if it was symmetric, it would look more beautiful. It should look symmetric, but it'll just look like three humps. And where I'm putting the stars right now, that represents what about the electron? The highest probability of finding an electron is right there. The lowest probability of finding an electron is where? Zero at the node. So there's your 2D stuff. Okay. One more thing that I didn't say earlier, and this is going to be true for 2D and 3D. When psi equals zero, that's the node. So if you're at a node, psi equals zero, and you can see here when psi equals zero, that's where your node is. Okay. That's going to be true for 2D and 3D. So your book is kind of saying, okay, now we've done this mental exercise and you totally understand it completely. Now since you totally understand, let's do 3D. And that's a concept in your book that this is going for.